Hi everybody, today we're going to talk about symbiosis and uh, take a few notes on symbiosis. Uh, this comic here is kind of one of my favorites. Um, symbiosis is really how different organisms interact with one another. Um, and sometimes those interactions can be positive, sometimes those interactions can be negative for one or more of the organisms. And so this comic I think is pretty funny because this uh, cow organism here is working with a chicken and they're uh, kind of using a slingshot to shoot rocks at the human here. It says more unusual examples of am animal symbiosis. So when we're looking at symbiosis and if we want to define symbiosis, uh, it's really the relationship that describes how two species are affected by living together or interacting together. Uh, I am a fan, fan of comic books and uh, comic movies and uh, this is Venom from Spider-Man. Um, it's basically the Spider-Man character that has this symbiote that kind of makes him a uh, bad character, but uh, this is an example of symbiosis for comic fans out there. So there's three main types of symbiosis that we're going to talk about. The first one is called mutualism. Probably heard of that before. The second is called parasitism. I'm sure you've probably heard of that one. And the last one is called commensalism. So we're going to look at these three more specifically. In mutualism, both species benefit from the relationship. So we have two species here that benefit from the relationship. They're both happy. They're both getting something from the relationship and the interaction. For some more specific examples, uh, if you've seen Finding Nemo or if you've heard of a clownfish and a sea anemone before, this is an example of mutualism. The clownfish lives inside the sea anemone. Uh, the sea anemone has tentacles, you can see right here, that are actually uh, poisonous or provide a sting to other organisms. The clownfish is immune to that poison, to that sting, and so it's not affected by it. Um, the sea anemone provides protection to the clownfish, like Nemo and Marlin here. Um, and the sea anemone provides in turn for the, uh, um, excuse me, the clownfish provides in turn for the sea anemone some food, um, just little droppings and stuff that it leaves, and, and so it, and essentially it provides fruit, food for the sea anemone. Another good example is the interaction between birds or insects and plants. This hummingbird here is adapted so that it has a, um, uh, a beak that is able to fit inside of a plant. And so when it goes to collect nectar from this plant, it's getting food. It helps the hummingbird. The plant is passing its pollen onto this bird. So when the bird, the hummingbird, puts its beak into the plant, it gets some pollen on the uh, on its beak and on its on its face. And when it goes to another plant, it transfers that pollen to the other plant, and it helps the plants to fertilize and actually to reproduce. And so that's an example of mutualism. I've got a couple of other examples on the website that I'd like you to look at. Some really cool videos. Uh, the first option that I've posted is the dolphin hunt. It's looking at how dolphins interact with another species to help them hunt. The second one is also really cool. It looks how ants and caterpillars help each other um, in, in terms of defense against other organisms. So you have your choice of which two you'd like to watch. They're linked on the uh, biology ecology page on my website. You can watch either of them and use those that, as your example. Our second type of symbiosis is called parasitism. And in this case, one species benefits and the other is harmed. So we've got a smiley face and we've got uh, another organism that has a frowning face. You've probably heard of this before. Um, fleas, ticks, leeches, they're all examples of parasites or a parasitic relationship. If you've seen the movie or heard of the movie Aliens, um, that was originally back in the 80s, there's been a couple of them since then. Uh, it's an organism that bursts out of the chest of an individual. It's kind of a funny Halloween costume from a kid. I thought it was funny. Um, but fleas here is a better example, and they uh, bite dogs, and they do that to collect blood. The dogs um, do not benefit from this. The fleas get blood from biting the dogs, and so this is an example of parasitism. Again, linked on the Biology Ecology website, there's a link to this killer fungi video, which is really, really cool and looks at how um, a parasite affects and eventually kills some different insect species. Definitely check that one out. The last one is commensalism. And in this uh, type of symbiosis, one species benefits and the other is neither helped nor harmed. So one species is happy, the other one is just kind of like, meh, could take it or leave it. Doesn't really affect them in a positive or a negative way. Um, there is some thought that clementialism is really just um, examples of symbio symbiotic relationships that we don't completely understand. So that, for example, this blue whale here has barnacles that are living on it. 
the barnacles we don't know or we don't think really help the whale do anything. We don't, uh, we don't think that they help it to survive or it doesn't provide any benefit or any harm. But the barnacles, by living on the whale, are definitely benefited in that they are able to uh, transport. Uh, normally they're not able to move, they're not a mobile species. So by living on the whale, they're able to, to move around and they're also able to help kind of filter feed by moving to different areas where the whale feeds. So we think this is an example of conventionalism. Um, conventionalism might more really just be species interactions that we don't completely understand. Uh, here's another picture from Pirates of the Caribbean of Davy Jones, um, barnacles living on him. So that's another example. Um, I've linked <clears throat> also on the biology website uh, your last example here. This is the pitcher plant. Uh, pitcher plant's kind of like a Venus flytrap. It's a plant species that gets its nutrients primarily from eating insects and small organisms. This one's really, really cool. It's looking at how uh, this plant uh, species um, has an interaction with the spider. The spider is actually the one that's benefiting, um, and it does this really cool trick, and I'll let you watch that one to check it out. Those are our three examples of symbiotic relationships, mutualism, parasitism, and conventionalism. Please make sure that you watch the videos to get your examples. They're definitely worth checking out and worth your time. Very interesting.